This is my workshop where I do most of my metal work in this room. And over here is uh, my showroom, mostly metal work in here too. And then back in here is the secret laboratory. Now here's a piece that I showed at the candy store back in 1970. This is Dr. Gladstone, portrait of my sort of alter ego at the time. The brain in the bowl. I was just starting to do that when uh, Adeliza decided that my work was too weird and she couldn't sleep in the room with it at night. She didn't actually tell me, but she told other artists and the word got back to me that uh, I was getting too weird for her taste. I saw the funk art catalog when it came out and I knew about the uh, artwork of a lot of the ceramic artists that were in that show. And I related to that because it, it had a sense of humor and a sense of uh, personal expression that I could appreciate. In fact, when I thought of the word funk art, I thought of folk art as being kind of similar. But as uh, when we moved out to California and um, became part of the social uh, group of artists that were showing at the candy store and that were being called the funk artists, um, we decided we were going to create a new name, Nut Art. And uh, David Zack wrote a number of articles for art magazines about nut art and Roy DeForest wrote a manifesto about nut art. It says basically that uh, nut art is a phantasmagorical kind of art in which the uh, artist builds a personal world. In my mind it was a reaction against uh, the high-powered New York art scene and uh, the other thing was that when you're working out in the Midwest, or, or as Wiley has been quoted saying, when uh, nobody seems to be caring about what you're making anyway, you could just go ahead and make whatever you want to. And I think that was an attitude amongst the funk artists and the nut artists, you know, um, to start talking and do things without uh, regard for the big art world. It was an unusual uh, scene because when you met Adeliza McHugh, you wondered how would this meek little old lady ever sell art in the first place. <laughs> but I, I was really reassured by the fact that uh, Arneson and, G and Gihuly both showed there. And I figured <laughs> she must have something going. <laughs> she did sell a real weird uh, animal bust uh, which I recently, just 40 years later now, uh, bought on eBay uh, from one of her uh, former employees. I called it Antler Lamp. It's kind of based on an idea that I got from my dad. Uh, my dad was a practical joker and uh, he worked in a garage on cars. And one of the jokes they would play is that they would put a uh, light bulb into their nostril and pretend they're running around looking for a uh, handkerchief to collect this big snot bubble. So uh, that gave me the idea for the, to do this lamp with a couple of light bulbs that would light up and some real antlers. This is more typical of the kind of work that Adeliza liked and uh, exhibited. Uh, this is called a lizard lamp and it features uh, the nose the pursed lips and the little fingers of some kind of a fantastic uh, creature. As a result of being a prolific artist who doesn't sell very much, I end up with uh, this museum of lots of work all over. And uh, I've sort of developed that ever since uh, we lived in this place. We've lived here 42 years. At first I used to kind of kid around about having a museum and take pictures of things and little by little, you know, the museum became an actual reality and we had, ended up having an unnatural historical site in our backyard. And uh, we find all sorts of mythical animals here. 
there's a cyclops right there next to the sign. But our most famous specimen was the uh, Bigfoot. Everybody was looking for Bigfoot in the early 70s. And so uh, we used our uh, powers of kaolism to uh, create this specimen. And here's a poster by uh, Maya Wolf, Maya Zach, Maya Peoples, uh, with a drawing of the candy store gallery. You walked up the steps here to the porch, and you got your cookies and cake in here, and then you came back out on the steps, and you talked to each other. And the kids ran around in the garden in the bamboo. To me, it was a, it was a, a good social scene. Uh, I made uh, friendships that have lasted through, through the years. It says, my God, Clayton's 50. I think Betty had a 50th birthday party for me, and Bob brought this over. Wasn't that nice? I don't know why it rattles, so. Oh, here's a uh, Victor Sikansky tree tr trunk, too. That was made at TB9 in, in Davis. But I'm glad to be part of the, you know, the candy gallery uh, history and it was a good period of time, introduction to California and times we never forget.